www.thinkingdigital.com. Bo, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Elijah. Nice to speak with you and uh, great to be here again. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I'd first like to get your perspective on the gold and silver markets. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had seen gold and silver kind of move a lot higher. Silver went to about $20 and gold um, above $1,300. What is your perspective on the recent price action in the precious metals? With relation to yeah, gold and silver, um, the first part of July, we did have an up cycle into July. Um, and what we were hoping for was actually even higher prices than that were achieved. Um, but uh, still, you know, gold got up to, I think, 1377 uh, for the high. And, um, and so, yeah, silver did get up to the high into the mid-21s. Mid so um, the, the, the key resistance uh, for silver was at, uh, was at 18, um, and 1850, actually. And then for, for gold, it was at um, 1300. So both of those have been broken now. Um, but yes, uh, you know, there was a nice move. It just walked that move. We, you know, in terms of the paper positions, it was time to time to be out of those positions off the high, and uh, typically in the month of July you have what's called a summer doldrum. You know, the summer uh, there's just not a lot, lot going on, so it's weakness. So, don't be surprised if we have a little bit more weakness in the precious metals in this month of July right now. Uh, but again, we are in a bull market. Gold is going much, much higher than it is right now. And, uh, you know, these prices here uh, where gold's trading at, um, you know, when we got today for gold, gold right now sits at uh, um, about 1320. Uh, and silver's currently at uh, 1963 exactly, uh, today the 25th of July. So, you know, these, these lows, um, you know, that we're seeing here are, you know, are a blessing. Um, in terms of you know picking up some gold and precious metals at lower prices, uh, but again, don't be surprised if we see a little bit more weakness here in the month of July. All right, and what about the stock market? I know we've seen recently the stock market uh, hit all-time highs. What is your perspective on this? Well, um, I would suggest that uh, you know just as as a preface to the stock markets. Uh, it's very important to go back, um, and if you know, if, you, if you or if your listeners or viewers want to um, watch my videos, but look at the videos that we did all of last year, uh, and the one in, in the December, uh, you know, giving the true date of the Shemitah that we're expecting, you know, which is the uh, you know it's a cycle a move, a very a transition point for our world here, the coming up this not this October, but in all of our videos, uh, we always did our math calculations using the NASDAQ, okay? So we've talked about the you know, S&P and, and, and the Dow in the past, um, but the specific, you know, if you go watch the videos, the actual charts that were used and the exact calculations to show how we did the calculation top, it was specifically using only the NASDAQ and nothing else. And so from the year 2000, um, we had a seven year, seven month, seven day cycle. Um, and that put in a exact top on the NASDAQ on the 31st of October, uh, 2008. And then seven years, seven months, seven weeks to the exact day was July uh, 19th, which was a Sunday, uh, the 2015 of last year. So the first trading day was the exact high for the NASDAQ. Um, and that was of last year on the 20, 20th of July. Um, and since then, uh, the, no, the, the, all the world markets, including the NASDAQ, have all dropped, um, and, and virtually every single world market is lower since 2015. The only two markets you know, that like, you can really see that are higher are uh, the S&P and the Dow, uh, but those two markets were not based off our calculations. So if you look at the NASDAQ, you'll notice the NASDAQ is still lower today than it was on the 20th of uh, on the 20th of July of, tw of 2015, last year. Um, with relation to the markets, uh, that was today being on the 25th of July. Um, again, mathematically, um, uh, if you're looking at uh, religious years, you know, you're looking at a, at a year. So that would push last high uh, to July of this year. So mathematically, there's an extremely high probability that, that the U.S. And, and all the markets are sitting on highs again, right here, right now, um, the, you know, a year later from the 20th of last year, and uh, give or take a few days. So from this time point, we sh the, the U.S. markets 
including even though the U.S., the, the S&P and the Dow have gone higher, it's irrelevant, but in, in terms of um, time, um, that should have run out of energy now, and we should see the markets begin to roll over. And uh, I do believe our NASDAQ call of last year of the 20th will hold like a rock. And, um, and you know, this, this is now the third lower high for the NASDAQ, and we expect the, the micro equity markets to be rolling over, uh, you know, here and now, uh, you know, for the, next, uh, for the next period of time. But definitely, you know, what I'm seeing here is the markets are supposed to be, from a cycle perspective, rolling over now. All right, now I'd like to move to some viewers' questions. Now, the first viewers' question is about the stock market, and they're wondering when the Dow suffers its biggest drop at some point in the next two months, will share prices of precious metal miners plummet as well? Uh, I think that's a good question. I, I do believe that the mining stocks will um, back off. I, I don't, but I do believe that we're going to go higher first. Um, and so uh, I believe we're going to have an up cycle here for the precious metals. I believe the miners are going to go up. The mining uh, stocks will move up uh, with, with, the, uh, with gold and silver. And then um, as the markets are, are crashing initially, I will believe that the mining stocks will go up. And then on the severe portion of the crash, the, the mining stocks will probably back off or, or, or pull back and drop with, with silver as well, too. But I believe that'll be off uh, off of you know, next off the next cycle wave, uh, next few cycle waves to the upside. So um, I do don't see them pulling back. But again, uh, I do see uh, precious metals, mining stocks. I see them in a bull market. The mining stocks um, when we were in uh, in Tor in Vancouver, Canada, on the fifteenth. Uh, or the 19th of, J of January of this year, you know, we were, you know, the mood could not have been more depressing. Um, but you know, at that time we were, because that's the actual low on on the mining stocks, and we were on stage saying, you know, this this the mining stocks are supposed to be bottoming right now, and they did. And you'll notice that the mining stocks have uh, gone up incredibly, basically, you know, straight up ever since January. It's been an incredible move. So um, I don't see anything terrible for the mining stocks. I see a pullback um, as the markets, uh, you know, might get tied up a little bit in, in the market crash, but I, I don't see there being any kind of major damage done to the, the, the mining stocks whatsoever. All right. Now, moving to the gold and silver markets, Maljin Wong is wanting to know when you see silver breaking $50 an ounce. You know, we've had um, since last year. Um, I've been hoping that uh, and and looking for the because we knew the bottom would come in uh, latter parts of, of December or in December for silver. So the silver silver bottom at thirteen sixty uh, in December um, of last year, twenty fifteen, and it bottomed uh, two weeks uh, after gold did. Gold bottomed on the first week of December, December third, and we did our interview saying the bottoms here. So since then, we've had. Um, up cycles and we've had a bullish trend forming. We've had higher highs on both gold and silver. Uh, gold leads, silver follows, and then silver catches up and then starts to take over the lead. So you'll notice silver has been much more uh, strong here in the past uh, um, past couple of months relative to gold. Um, and so what we're what we're looking for is silver to break twenty two dollars, and then we expect it to go vertical. So that's what that's what I'm you know that's what I'm looking for here. I'm have a flag pattern that comes in around twenty two dollars. If silver breaks twenty two, then it could gap or it could go very powerfully to the upside. So then the question is, is you know where where the breaks come on for silver? Where could they try to stop it? But the problem is that they've had five years of price suppression on silver. So I think it, you know there's going to be a very very big issue to put the brakes on silver um, once it starts to move. So um, I believe we will still see new all-time highs. Uh, you know, from what I'm foreseeing here, we the, if it comes sooner, but I do I do look for new all-time highs for silver this year. And if it comes sooner rather than later, silver could actually go to three digits still this year, possibly, uh, depending on when the first when we break when we breach when silver breaches 50. So it's a pretty exciting times here. Um, you know, for silver and for gold, and I see you know, a very powerful up move. I, you know, there, there's an extreme amount of support for gold and silver to the downside, um, and and so it pressure is building right now. It's kind of like a massive spring, and and this this spring's been actually building for five years now. So there is an immense amount of pressure for for silver and gold to go vertical, and uh, when it goes, it'll be interesting to see you know where they could where they could stop it because uh, it's 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 been down here for a long time. Now this next viewer wants to know 
when you see gold and silver peaking? Well, again, we've had a down cycle uh, and a suppression cycle for like five years on silver since 2011. So we've got years ahead uh, for, for gold and silver. I think silver is going to do crazy numbers. Uh, gold as well, too. You know, gold's probably going to go to 10,000 easy, if, depending on how much money is, is, is eliminated from the system. You know, it could go much, much higher. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got years uh, forward for gold and silver. I, along the way, silver is going to be the volatile one of the two. So gold will be much more stable. Uh, but you know, when, if silver goes to um, you know three digits, um, it'll it'll fall pretty sharply off that number, then go higher again. Um, but we have years um, of a bull market uh, for gold and silver, and and these are the lows. So we've got years and years going forward still, and and so without giving an, an actual time point, I can tell you years is, is extremely generous, and, and we've got a long time uh, to be owning gold and silver and, and big numbers ahead, ahead for both gold and silver. Now, Gary Brown is wanting to know about gold and silver price manipulation. He asks, how do you see technology fixing the precious metal price manipulation? Will there ever be price separations so the paper price will be different than the physical price? Well, that's a great question. And this is where you have to look at, you know, you got the, uh, you, you got the China, China's opened up their, their market now. So they've got, uh, you know, they've got their own market. And, um, and so I, what I believe will happen at some point is the price fixing that's been happening on the West uh, will be taken over by the East. And so when the price will be set, whether whether the U.S. likes it or not, it'll be set at some point. Or by the, the whether whether the West likes it or not, I think the price will be set in the East. Um, and then when that happens, you know, that's when all all controls are lost, and you're going to see true price discovery. But that'll be uh, that'll be an event to watch, where you're going to see silver might you know maybe tw have ten dollar days to the upside, twenty dollar days, um, and so I, I, it's just it'll just when the controls are lost, they'll be lost, and and it's just literally. I think I think it's going to just transition straight to the east, um, away from the west, and and so the the paper price, you can put whatever price you want on it, and here you know in the U.S. for example, but you know if it's trading at extremely large numbers uh, in, in the east, I think that will change very dramatically, very quickly, and and you're going to see pre physical just disappear. And, and so I, I think it's going to be a very, it's, it's, it's literally going to be a, a transition from west to east. Now, Ken Landon is wanting to know about your perspective on gold versus silver. Now, he asks, would you advise owning silver more than gold? And also, what kind of ratio of silver to gold do you see in the future? You know, those are tough questions um, in terms of the ratio for the future. You know, realistically, the, the in-ground ratio, anybody who does mining will know the in-ground ratio is somewhere in the, in the range of 9 to 1 to, to 14 to 1, but, you know, so maybe an average of 10 to 1 uh, for the ratio of gold to silver. So for every one ounce of gold you mine, you get 10 ounces of silver. problem with that equation is, is that the ratio right now is like, I think, 70 or 65 to 1. So you've got a hugely a disproportionate uh, equation right now. So silver is definitely the way to, to buy precious metals just because it's so much more inexpensive. For every ounce of gold you buy, you can actually buy 65 or 68 ounces of silver. So it's a much better um, place to be, you know, to, to, to be, you know, nice, better, nice, it's a much better metal to be purchasing in terms of the ratio. Um, I do see the ratio uh, getting back at some point because basically a war cycle would put silver back to 10 to 1, for example. And uh, now, again, because of the price suppression for five years, you know, could, the, could it jump up and, and spike and maybe get to 1 to 1 at some point for a short period of time? You know, anything's possible. But I do know that. You know, we've had a ratio of about I think high in like high 70s or 80 to one, and so now the ratio is starting to, to drop, and so silver is going to rise more proportionally relative to gold, and I believe um, you know at some point uh, it, you know it at least maybe when it gets to 30 to one um, or something like that or 20 to one, you might you know that might be a better a good decent time to look at maybe doing a swap. Uh, for, have some gold, silver for some gold, uh, but again, um, you know, it's just uh, right now with the ratio of where it's at, you know, I think it's an incredible place to be, you know, purchasing silver rel relative to gold, and uh, but again, you do want to have some gold as well too, and um, but I think silver's the way to go. Definitely, I mean, I've heard before 
some people say, you know, that silver is probably more undervalued than gold, but also you need to be able to stomach the price volatility because we've seen silver a lot more volatile than gold. So gold is a good investment, probably, um, in my opinion, if, if you want something that's going to be more stable and um, move up more stably, but but in the long term, silver will probably outperform, but be a lot more volatile. Right, like when silver had some of its extreme prices, it's really fun to watch, but then it it, it it comes down quite dramatically and quickly off those highs. So you know, if if silver breached and you know, went up to three digits, it could keep going higher. But then but then the retracement off of three digits silver would be pretty spectacular to watch, you know. And you don't want to be holding, uh, you know paper positions if it if it drops like that because it'd be pretty pretty dramatic in terms of the fall but then yes it'll come back up and, and then you make a new highs it just it goes through more swings um, price swings than gold does and what I've discovered with we're looking at cycles gold to silver it's because silver has a slightly different cycle relative to gold gold has a more stable cycle and silver has a more volatile cycle in terms of time so silver has uh, an extra amount of there's a time period where it has more downside than gold does, um, and and so you so you, when when the ratios do get smaller, that is a good time to swap some silver for gold, so you don't need to go through those you know, massive mood swings or you know price swings um, on on silver. But absolutely, you know, silver is is, is money. It, it just like gold, it's gold and silver. They're both they're both money, and uh, you know, in, in times of distress, you know, they they're they're what you want to be holding. No, yeah, I just uh, was thinking, you know, when I've looked at the markets, that's what I've seen. Silver is more volatile than gold. But do you do you know the reason behind that? I mean, why is that? Well, I think, you know, nations, when big countries go in, they buy gold, they don't buy silver. And, and so nations of the world will always be buying gold. It's money of kings. And you know, king, you know, they don't sell it as much. They they, they buy and they hoard it, and they buy and they hold it. So you're you're going to have a lot more um, stability in it versus a, a, a you know metal like silver. It's tied in with the markets and it has some relation with the stock market. So when stock markets fall, it it has a tendency to you know, react with the stock market, and and gold will not. And so it just it has a little bit more volatility. But then when gold's going up, it's re silver is really going up. And then when gold's um, toppings, you know, and the stock market's crashing, gold will hold up better, and silver can tend uh, tend to you know to fall with the equity markets for a short period of time. But uh, again, the, the the ratio now is reversed. Uh, so I don't see silver falling a whole lot with the stock markets anymore. Um, but still, you know, it, it will have a little bit more tendency to fall uh, with the equity markets and then than gold and gold will definitely. All right. Well, moving on here, Blair is wanting to know, I own silver certificates presently underwater bought in 2011 and realized that not holding the actual physical metal is risky. I wonder how high silver can go where the paper silver promises may be dissolved or not honored. Could I wait till $35 to $70 an ounce to sell them back to the bank, or would I be wise to sell them now and buy the physical metal? You know, that's a great question, and it's a very hard answer to, to give, because, you know, at some point, you know, when silver does, like I was saying earlier, if, if, the, if, the, if the metals, precious metals market transitions from west to east, you have to ask if there's, there's a counterparty risk you know, and, and if you're holding physical um, precious metals, gold and silver, you have no counterparty risk. But if you're paper, there's always that counterparty risk. So honestly, I, I don't know how to answer that question because if it does transition, the prices transition, you have a massive price move or reset to, to the east. Um, you know, will those paper, you know, papers be honored? Will it be honored here? Uh, here, I, I don't know. And so um, it's it's a tough question to answer. And I wish I had the answer for it, but I don't. But I just, to me, I've, I've always encouraged and everything. Every time I do you know, an interview or whenever I make a video, I always encourage physical, 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 because there is no counterparty risk in that money. All right. Now, Matthew Beatty wants to know, what does your cycle analysis have in regards to Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is actually interesting. I don't talk much about Bitcoin because I do believe everybody needs to first own gold and silver. So once you have enough gold and silver, I think you can look at some Bitcoin. You know, it's it's fun to look at. Um, I, I believe um, 
the only reason Bitcoin is going to go to some incredibly large numbers in the future, um, and, and I believe that will happen, and the reason is is because you won't be able to get gold, physical gold and silver. Um, and so it'll be the go-to currency, it'll be the go-to form of monies um, when, when, when paper starts to fail. Uh, but the first thing I believe, you know, is, uh, it has more freedom of movement right now. There's less, there's less controls of it, and you know, you'll notice that Bitcoin was trading in, you know, two or three hundred, you know, just not not too long ago, a few months ago, um, went up to four hundred, and then it, it's and it's now it's sitting at, uh, you know, at, in the six hundred range, um, and that'll soon it's going to I believe going to breach and break out of that and go much much higher. Um, and beyond that, uh, you know, it just when 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 the silver supply, the gold supply dries up, uh, you know, when when the markets, when gold and silver really start to move, um, then Bitcoin's gonna uh, gonna move incredibly well uh, in reaction because people need to put their money somewhere, and if you can't get physical gold and silver, I think uh, Bitcoin will be the go-to. Diane Harbauer is wanting to know. Your view on the yuan joining the SDR currency basket on the specifically chosen date, October 2nd, 2016, the Jubilee, Jubilee date, as well as ramifications to current economic conditions. Can you expand a little bit on this? Well, if my calculations are correct, what I did was we, I have a specific cycle that, that, that has been, I've been tracking that cycle um, for, for quite a few years now. And in when the Jubilee failed last, when the, when the in market crash failed last September, when we knew it would, uh, from that time point, when we basically knew that I knew that there was a time point coming up this October, um, this the second that was critically important, the second inflection point. It's an inflection point in time, which is very, very important um, for our world. So it's, and then when I, calculate out the October 2nd date, it was interesting because all of these other things were coming up at that time frame. We had, um, you know, the SDR coming up the, the day before that, because it was going to be put into to the, uh, in, into the, into the, I'm sorry, the Chinese one was going to be put into the, uh, into the basket. Of, and so I found the whole time point to be fascinating. And then the day after that was uh, Rosh Hashanah was, was the new year. Um, so that timing calculation was coming up to be extremely interesting. And from the market perspective, if we have a, a massive or sizable price drop uh, between now and into October, gold moves um, powerfully higher with silver, it'll be interesting to see you know, what actually happens in October. Because again, the cycles don't give me events, but they give me critical inflection points in our, in our world and our time. And so I do know that that October time point will be um, an important time point for our world. There will be a lot of changes um, that will be implemented, um, and that's the best I can say at this at this time. Um, so again, we we it, 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 but coming up into that time point, it's important to make sure that we, you know, that we're that we're not you know being in the market and and do um, do own physical gold and silver. In anticipa an anticipation of that time point, and uh, and I think after that, uh, it's going to get even more exciting, you know, for the precious metals. Now, our last question will will be another question from Gary Brown. He's wanting to know about if you see hyperinflation coming in the future. Well, hyperinflation is basically a loss of faith uh, in currency, and then they turn on the printing presses and print more money, and so you devalue your currency. So if gold's going up to 2000, you know, silver's at 50, uh, $50, $80, $100, then basically you have a hyperinflation environment and you know you not only will gold and silver be going higher but you'll have other commodities going higher as, as well too. Um, but again I, I do believe gold and silver will have the, the most power um, especially silver. Um, in that type of an environment, so yes, I do see hyperinflation coming, and uh, and I do see that uh, you know that, that you know you can't you know when the mark when the market crash does come, I think the immediate reaction is going to be is turn on the printing presses, and then you have uh, you know then you're going to start to experience hyperinflation, whereas right now it's been hidden, you haven't seen it, you haven't really seen it just yet. All right, well, Bull Polney, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, were there any la other last thoughts you'd like to add, and where can our viewers find you online? Uh, my website is gold2020forecast.com, 
And, uh, you know, you can go there. We have a handful of videos that we've done in the past. We have um, also a YouTube channel. Uh, but, uh, you know, at our, at our webpage, if people are interested in time points, um, you know, we've got a specific time points for we're looking for a crash still to happen this year. There's a mathematical uh, date that's calculated, um, you know, that's supposed to occur between now and the, and the October time frame. Uh, so that's provided with our stock index. We have a, a cycle high time point coming in for gold this year as well, which is supposed to be pretty exciting um, high. Um, so we've got to offer that within our gold index. But I, I do see you know, a very, very uh, exciting year ahead for the precious metals. And um, you know, since we called the low uh, in December, you know, price is never going to come back down to $1,045. And, um, and my metals will continue to progress higher this year. And here we have an exciting time, um, you know, for 2016. Don't be surprised if we have a little bit of price weakness still here in July. But then after that, I think, you know, we'll be progressing higher and higher. Once again, Bo Polny, thank you so much for joining us today.